Another uh, question here, what is the proper use of giving your testimony when witnessing? And I can tell you that um, so much of this, uh, this is a question that I see a little bit more and more because um, the culture we're living in is generic culture. I mean, I think as, as a young man growing up in the 60s and 70s, that was probably a time when most of us would have approached um, defending our faith by making a point-by-point -point case. For my own sons and daughters now, I think that they are far more moved by a narrative in which somebody explains their own process and they find themselves in the story of their friends as their friends are talking to them. So the value of narrative it does seem to me in a culture of, of um, uh, a more relative view or pluralistic view of truth is, is really uh, elevated because everyone's got their own narrative, right? Everyone's got their own testimony. And more and more I see that when I'm talking to people of, of different worldviews, particularly LDS believers, we're eventually going to be talking about a testimony, right? At some point, they're going to offer their testimony as to why uh, the Book of Mormon, for example, is true or why they believe Joseph Smith is a prophet. And I think we also do that as Christians. And is there a role for testimony? Absolutely. I, I think there's got to be a, a careful blend of, of case-making and testimony. I have a testimony as a Christian. I, I often want to spend time explaining why I believe this to be true. But at some point, if you were to ask me, well, what, how did you get saved? What was your process? I'm more than happy to share it. But one thing that struck me early on in my dealings with my own family, who are mostly uh, LDS, was this verse in, in uh, 1 John 5. I want to read it to you. Because we all have a testimony. I have one even related to my own examination of Mormonism. My family has testimony. Each first person got their own testimony. So I typically will go to 1 John 5, starting in verse 9, where John writes, If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. So this is something that was very powerful for me as I looked and said, that's got to be true. We all have a testimony, but the testimony of God has got to be greater than that. And here's what it says in verse, starting in verse 9. Uh, the, 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 the witness of God is greater. For the witness of God is this, that he has borne witness concerning his Son. The one who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. The, the one who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the witness that God has borne concerning his Son. And the witness is this. This is the kind of the, the money line. is in verse 11. Here's the witness of God. That God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has the life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you, and catch this, who believe in the name of the Son of God in order that you may know, present tense, know now that you have eternal life. And when I first read that, I realized, wow, two things. Number one, that in the end, that the thing that God wants us to see is the most important testimony, is that we can know right now that we have eternal life. And how in the world could you ever know right now if you're saved? Unless you're in the one system, the one theistic worldview, in which your salvation is not dependent on your good works, because if that was the case, you could never know if you've done enough. But it's instead rooted in something that was done for you, in which case you could know now if you accept that gift or not. So this testimony of God is really all about the grace of God that is unique to Christianity. And I think that testimony is the far, the, by far the most important testimony. So now when I share with my friends my own personal testimony, I make sure that I include the testimony of God as part of it. Yes, I do take time to give evidences. I always am a cop. Okay, I'm going to do that. You're stuck with me and that's just the way I, I, I think. But in the end, I want to make sure that you understand, here's how I process these, these evidences and how I came to faith. And then I want you to know the most important testimony, which John tells us in 1 John 5 is the testimony of God, that you can know today that you have eternal life. And of course, the only way you can know that is if you're a Christian. Because it's the one worldview that assures us that it's not dependent on our good works, but is instead dependent on something that's already been done for you. So you can know now that you, you're saved. And that's, I think, the way I would approach using testimony. I'll always use evidences, but I'll make sure, as I include my own personal testimony, that I'll also include the testimony of God.